Hey friends, it's been about two years since my last triple triad guide and Final Fantasy has changed a lot in that time so I wanted to make a new guide with a few updates. Instead of going through specific cards, I'm going to give some more general tips about card collecting that should help you on your way. The main idea being that a lot of these cards take time to get and the earlier you start working on them the faster you can get your fancy card mount. Also don't forget to like and subscribe for more Final Fantasy content. I also stream regularly on Twitch so please drop me a follow there if you like. Number 1, the MSQ. As you play through the MSQ, you'll gradually unlock more dungeons and trials. To be honest, by the time you reach Endwalker, you would probably have reached your first milestone of 30 cards just from doing the story content. Pretty much every dungeon and trial has a chance of dropping a card at the end, so if you do your roulettes, I think you'll have no trouble reaching 30 cards. You also want to unlock everything that you can, raids, alliance raids, trials, including the Hildebrand content, Many NPCs become available only after you've completed that side story, so work on getting everything available to you unlocked. Number 2, the Triple Triad Trader. Don't forget to buy cards from the Triple Triad Trader in the Gold Saucer. A little tip, you can queue into the Battle Hall to find the Trader there instead of going all the way to the Gold Saucer. New cards become available as the story progresses, so check back every now and then to see if there are any new cards. Many but not all of the cards that she sells are only available from her, so I recommend checking if there are any other sources for each card before you drop 100,000 MGP. Eureka and Bojda There are 8 cards that only become available as you progress through the story in Eureka, and 7 that only become available through Bojda and Zadnor. For Eureka, you'll need to complete the story up until you clear the third zone Eureka Pyros, and in Zadnor you'll need to reach rank 25 and finish the whole story there completing the Dalriada Raid. Number 4, the Challenge Log you're going to need a lot of MGP if you want to collect all the cards from the trader. Don't forget to do your challenge log every week to maximize your MGP. Number 5. Achievements Before Endwalker, we used to visit Jonas in Gridania to claim achievement rewards, but now you can claim them directly from the achievements interface. Also, this is important, you're going to want to beat every Triple Triad NPC at least once even if you don't need any cards from them. The reason is that the Retra card is earned from defeating 107 NPCs, which at the time of this video, patch 6.0, is every playable NPC in the game. Number 6, Tournaments. There are two types of tournaments, open tournaments which run every two hours, and regular tournaments which run every few weeks. You need to win an open tournament at least once in order to get the Phoenix card, and it's worth doing the regular tournaments when you can as you get some rare cards and a lot of MGP as rewards, even if you don't place very highly. Number 7, Crafter and Gatherer. You're going to need to level a crafter and a gatherer both to at least level 70. There are a few reasons for this, one being custom deliveries. Uh, you need to have a level 70 crafter or gatherer to start the custom delivery quest line with L2 in the firmament and reach max satisfaction to be able to purchase this card. Both this and the Lisbeth card cost Sky Builder scripts which you can get from the Ishgardian restoration. A quick way to earn these scripts is to join the Ishgardian fates which happen every few days. Number 8, Beast Tribes. One of the other reasons you need to have a crafter and a gatherer leveled is the beast tribes. My biggest piece of advice is to start these early. On the screen are the beast tribes and ranks that you currently need to unlock playable NPCs each hub. You need to have at least a level 70 crafter for the dwarves and a level 70 gatherer for the Kitari. Number 9, Blue Mage. That's right, there are two cars locked behind Blue Mage content. You need to have your Blue Mage to level 60 and complete the story up to the quest of Blue Cheese. If you haven't already, have a friend help you power level on the beaches of Kalusia and start learning those spells. Number 10, buy color gemstones. Do you like fates? Because at the time of this video, Mr. Square Enix says you need to farm at least 205 fates in order to purchase all the cards available. And I imagine that more cards will become available as we progress through Endwalker as they did with Shadowbringers. In a moment, I'll display which zones need which ranks together with how many fates you need to complete in total to reach that rank. So skip ahead if you haven't finished Endwalker and don't want to see the names of the zones. Lastly, keep track. I highly recommend that you keep track of which cards you have and need. I use this site, but there are plenty of others around. Many cards can be obtained from multiple sources, so keeping track using these sites can be a huge help. As you might find it's not always worth grinding an NPC if you can get the same card from a raid or a trial more easily. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Let me know if I missed anything. If you've watched this far, I really appreciate you. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone!